Hi, I'm Rob Chaw with Military Athlete, and I want to talk to you today about how we work with this idea of durability in the programming here. And I want to just take a look at this kind of equation that I've kind of developed over the years. Um, durability equals 80% strength plus 10% stabilizer strength plus 10% proper movement. I just want to kind of break these down for you and, and kind of tell you where I'm coming from. This 80% strength. Here's what I believe. First, stronger athletes. Are simply harder to injure. If they do get, happen to get injured, their injuries won't be as significant as weaker athletes. In other words, if they do get injured, they won't get injured as bad. And then if they do get injured, they'll recover faster. In our programming, especially the, the operator sessions, strength is king. When I say strength is king, that doesn't mean strength is everything. We're not trying to build power lifters or Olympic weightlifting uh, champions. Our strength is, is based, we want to get athletes to a high level of relative strength, but our strength standards are not extreme by any means. For example, um, the strength standards that we have, they're available on the website, but we want an athlete, a male athlete, Uh, for example, just a couple of them be able to bench press uh, one and a half times his body weight. And front squat, one uh, um, point five times his body weight. These aren't super high level um, strength standards in the strength world, but these are level of strength that I think I can build into an athlete without adding significant weight gain and or uh, making him so much have to work on strength that he loses his work capacity. So, again, from my perspective, what I've learned, what I've seen, what I believe is that durability is 80% strength. The best thing I can do for my athletes to make them more durable is just to get them stronger. Um, a good example that I've uh, well, we'll, just, we'll just keep on going, I'll come back to it. Next is 10% stabilizer strength. Our stabilizer work is focused on two specific areas. The first is the rotator cuff. right here in the shoulders. When athletes have shoulder issues, and especially us guys, it's always a rotator cuff issue. These are small, geeky little muscles who need lots of strength, and especially strength endurance to make them more durable. And we have a couple exercises that we do this with. Um, uh, we have the shoulder hand job is a great one that we use, Y plus L, shoulder scarecrow. Those exercises that you see on the site are designed to build strength endurance in your rotator cuff. The second area is the glute medius. That's a small muscle in your butt here, in your hip, that is responsible for keeping your hip, your knee, and your ankle in line. If you have a strong glute medius, and, and again, it's a strength endurance issue, not necessarily a maximum strength issue, um, it helps keep your knee, your hip, and uh, your ankle in line, and helps your knee from buckling to the inside. It just protects your knee from tendon tears. And so we do a lot of glute medius work to stabilize your muscle. Our, my favorite glute medius exercise is Jane Fonda's. And if you've been with us a long time, you've done the Jane Fonda's, and this geeky exercise is a lot more difficult than it looks if you've ever done it. Second, let's take a look at proper, uh, proper movement. We're focused on two areas here with proper movement. Again, it's the shoulders and the hip. We have lots of exercises that we do in the strength circuits, in the work capacity circuits, and then in durability circuits at the end of work capacity sessions where we're hitting the shoulders and the hip. And we're just working on proper movement. Um, a shoulder exercises, for example, is a floor slide. 
and the wall slide. These are patterning movements for the shoulder to keep the scapulas moving the way they're supposed to. The real area that we're focused on is hip. And, and the hip movement is, we have all these types of, we're trying to hit this in a bunch of different areas. We're trying to hit it through flexibility and mobility. And through patterning. For example, a flexibility mobility hip exercise is just a simple in-step stretch or the third world stretch. You've been doing this, uh, the sessions for a while and you're familiar with both of those. A patterning exercise is a squat to stand. or the toe touch complex. These parenting exercises, both for the shoulders and the hip, are designed to try to train the brain to relearn proper movement. A lot of us, just from sitting in chairs too long, have forgotten how to fire muscles correctly so our hips move correctly. The way that we work the stabilizer strength and the proper movement into our sessions is we do that through our circuits as rests and our strength circuits. For example, let's say we're doing six rounds of uh, um, four power cleans and then a one uh, box jump. And then between rounds, I'll make you do some working rest and I'll have you lay down and do a floor slide. This is the sneaky way that I can work in some of this geeky durability stuff in a strength circuit at the same time giving you a working rest before you hit your next round of power cleans. We do this with both these parenting exercises and the, the um, uh, mobility exercises, the proper movement exercises. But the main focus here, again for me, is the strength side. It's been my experience that I can have a strong athlete who doesn't move very well and that guy's pretty darn durable. I'm, I'm like that myself. I'm, I don't move very well, I have great functional movement, but over the years I've been pretty durable. On the other hand, I get weak athletes in here who have great movement. The best example I've had is yoga instructors who come and train with us. They have great movement, um, um, uh, their hips move great, they have no issues with their shoulders but they're fairly delicate because they're just weak. Um, so for those reasons and many others, I believe strength is first in, in turn when it comes to durability. So again, for us, durability is 80% strength. And, and again, we're not trying to build power uh, meet champions or Olympic weightlifting champions. Our strength standards are based on relative strength or strength for your body weight, and they're reasonable. I can get you that strong without putting more, a lot of weight on you. And also, you don't need to lose a lot of work capacity to get there. 80% strength plus 10% uh, stabilizer strength plus 10% proper movement.